Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies. On this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, I'm interviewing Justin Franson. That name sounds familiar. You're correct. He's been on a couple times before. He's an athleticism performance coach. He's the founder of athleticism.com and emfrocks.com. He's the author of the book, Athleticism, Whole Body and Whole Brain Equals Performance. Justin has been in the game over 25 years and he does nerve work for sports performance, and he works with amateur and professional athletes in most major sports. He successfully treats concussions quickly. Note that that is huge. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. And he knows that everything has a resonance, a vibration. He uses light and sound frequency to help with treating his folks. And he's really, really passionate about helping his athletes understand the impacts of EMF and wearable technology. And today we're going to be talking about that. We're going to be talking about the wearable technology, the biometric tracking that humans want to see, but what's happening behind the scenes. We're going to talk about some of the things we're seeing with the environment and chemtrails. We're going to talk a little bit about the jab and what we've been seeing in terms of effects on people. And we're just going to go deep in a lot of different things. This podcast was a great conversation with Justin to just really hash through some of the things we're seeing out there, some of the greenwashing, to some of the things that we need to be opening our eyes to and understanding what what's being presented to us and, and understanding what that means for us, but also the impact on our health. I try to be very objective in this podcast, but I have to admit there's a lot of things I'm seeing that are frustrating me, and you'll hear that in this podcast. But nevertheless, keep your mind open. Enjoy the ride. This one's a good one. Let's reintroduce you to Justin Franson. Hey, Hell Junkies. I have Justin Franson on again today. This will be like time three, right, Justin? Yeah, that's where we're at. I love it. I love it. Can't get enough. Mm-hmm. Well, you know, you have such great info. And for me, I just love conversations where we can be real and talk about what's going on in the world and and what we need to really be watching out for in terms of things that impact our health. And in your case in particular, one of our big hot topics of the past, but something I want to bring back today again, is the EMF discussion. Well, it's such a crazy topic now, but I talked to Steve Kirsch, who's big in the reporting And I'm like, hey, have you heard of any links between the vaccine and EMF? And he said, no, I haven't really heard about it. I said, well, let me write something about it for you. Because to me, there's no denying that there's links. And there's patents out there that they can start to change cognitive behaviors with vaccines uh, through EMFs. There's, There's technologies that they've rolled out about a decade ago that can really have EMFs link stuff together and straight lines. And Josh Del Sol did a talk about it. He did the documentary movie, Take Back Your Power. He spoke at Weston Price Foundation, Wise Traditions Foundation last week on it. And he really linked the, some of the old technology that they're, the, the patents that they've had with just the blood work that these doctors are seeing after and what the EMFs are doing to people's blood. Mm -hmm. And so from just the storytelling of all the different technologies that they've rolled out, how we know we're electric beings and that we're one with our atmosphere and that we can be more conductive when we have more heavy metals in us. And then to see that the, all the fallout that we're seeing now from the increased radiation that we just keep rolling out with this stuff. We'll we'll all have a nice story to tell with crazy references from dozens of of doctors and and studies. Once I, once I lay it down on paper. Sounds good. Sounds good. You know, I think a lot of people are going to be like Justin and they'll probably be like to me too. And then I'll, I'll give my story of what I've seen is 
what have you seen happening to people's blood lately? What have, what have the docs been reporting? And I, I'll give my my two scoops of just two things that I've been seeing big time right now. I'm seeing the electrolytes off consistently in folks. Electrolytes more so in the case of being drained. And folks, we use our sodium, potassium, and chloride to communicate with our cells and our and our body. And I'm seeing that more often than not. And probably in in the case of what I've seen more than anything is that it's just low enough for me to see it on the low end of things. And then there's been a couple of people who have been drastically low. And I've been like, hmm, what's going on here? And then there's red blood cell markers and other things. But what are, what are you hearing folks report? What's What's the story on your end? Well, mostly I see healthy athletes. And then the only time, you know, my clients are the amateur and professional athletes. So one that came in yesterday, both her parents are medical doctor physicians, and she had a concussion. So I treat concussions. So it was the third time she came in and she had a minor concussion. And she should have been healed with our treatments by then. And I'm going, what's going on? And it's funny you say that because she was totally dehydrated. And that was the one thing that was keeping her symptoms still there. And I, cause everything was working. We, we, I do a fun technique where we level her center her. I do nerve work through light therapy uh, to get the body knowing what their longitude and latitude lines are. So everything was reconnected. The EMFs were affecting her a little bit in her eyes and her thymus, but, but uh, she just, didn't have the conductivity in there. Those minerals were, were depleted. And I, I think it's a lot of it's from dehydration of the EMFs. And in addition to the EMFs or the, are the chemtrails. So there are the barium and strontium there, are, I think, especially the barium's really depleting the silica uh, hydration. So the silica is, is the one thing that keeps our fascia hydrated. So when we can up that amount with diatomaceous earth or I do alphavetic.com, their silica, it's in homeopathic pellets. That's when we can start to keep this, this living collective tissue matrix in our body really hydrated. That's huge. That's huge. And a lot of folks aren't having those types of tests, you know, and, and this is one of the things that if I do see electrolytes consistently off, I'm going to be like, let's look at your heavy metals. Let's look at what's going on in terms of vitamins and minerals in the body and, and get a, a real good sense of your charge. Let's put it that way. And silica is one that we've heard about over and over again. Um, but I don't know how many folks who are listening to this really kind of understood like silica. What? Isn't that like sand? So let's give a little bit more of the scoop on like, okay, you're using some products that have silica in it. What does it exactly do for the body and the tissues? How is it exactly helping the fascial tissue? So Gary Lineham, he does talks about the, just the opening up the fascia and the fascia works in a, in a spiral way. So when you can, when you can cross, you know, spiral and everything like, uh, create pressure, spiral pressure, rotational pressure, you can actually recharge that fascia. And that's the fascia is the framework for our entire system, our nervous system. Everyone says that the structure is muscles and bones. Well, it's really not. It's really fascia. Fascia is this innate intelligence matrix that gives and ebbs and flows. And before you're about to jump, it loads to be able to explode. I mean, it has like, that is the everything for our body. So if it's losing out on some of that uh, elasticity, uh, and we see it when people get older and they'll have saggy skin and everyone's like, oh, it's collagen. Well, it's most, mostly the fascia losing their elasticity, or we see it with cellulite. It's a lot of the fascia being dehydrated. It's not always just fat per se. So that's exactly what Gary would say. So when you can add in that silica, it keeps it taut, it keeps it young, it keeps it hydrated, and it keeps that electrical charge going. So you can have those explosive movements and the responsiveness that we're looking for. So kind of like the soup 
in between your cells, guys. And then also we do have a tissue layer, which which is that thin wrapping, which is what we know, know as the fascia. It's kind of like our suit. So I love some of the videos that folks do where they go and like tug on the 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 suit and and describe how that is the the fascia there. And um interestingly enough, like Gary, I would love to get him on the podcast. Um, guys, if you're listening and you're wondering like, who is this guy? This is a human garage. If you go to the website or if you go to Instagram, he's human garage there. Fascinating stuff. Now he also talks about the, um, CMOS too, quite a yes. bit. And, yeah. and so have you played with CMOS on, on that side of things, or if you want just straight to the silica? Yeah, I went straight to the silica for me. I haven't got a CMOS, but I hear the combination between the two are phenomenal. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it's it's definitely his 28 day reset or something. Um, right. Yeah. Shout out to Gary here, everyone. Now, now we all know his protocol. But no, it's 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 cool stuff. But I do think that because we are electrical beings, and of course, you know, our emotions, our energy, things of that nature, I do think that I... No, I think I know I've seen a lot of people have some serious kind of mental emotional challenges since getting the vaccine that we've really struggled to to gain balance on. I'm guessing you've seen that, too, with some of your folks as well. Yeah, definitely. And so much more. I mean, you asked the question of what other symptoms yeah. we saw. So I live in Laguna Beach, California, probably one of the arguably the healthiest mm -hmm. areas in the country as far as, you know, People eating clean have the wealth to have access to the right people. And then they're all outdoors doing stuff, ocean swims and runs. And uh, they're, they're just super fit. And they're in the sun grounding all the time. Literally within our neighborhood, I've seen everything from death to uh, cardiovascular challenges cancer, multiple people, uh, autoimmune. I've seen the myocarditis. I've seen one of the healthiest, youngest like studs in the neighborhood go literally on crutches for a year uh, because his whole nervous system shut down. So one person's kid born blind. I mean, you can't statistically have that ever. And I sent you a video just before this about New Zealand parliament, one of the members of parliament saying she's going to criminally prosecute for mandating this stuff. I mean, it's just, she says on the video, 30 people from the same neighborhood <laughs> got, got the same shots on the same days and they all died within the same period of time. They're all dead. You know, and, and the same 30 did the same place that she's like, that is statistically impossible. Like you can't do that. Like there's something criminally wrong with that. So, yeah. So literally normally I'm the guy saying, Hey, I've seen all the EMF challenges of the lack of focus and cognitive and all the behavioral challenges and then suicide and diabetes and Alzheimer's cardiovascular disease and cancer and infertility. And I've seen all that in the last decade working with it. And now we're seeing stuff at record speeds that we've never seen before. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've seen everything you've described as well. A couple of, of my, my pro athletes, my card, I mean, just crazy, right. Had to leave NFL. Um, so this kind of stuff, you know, obviously folks listening right now, if you've had the vaccine, I don't want folks to be panicking, right? I want folks to really understand that there are things you can do right now. And that's where I want to turn this so that we can help folks to balance their body and do what we can do to help get things back um, in a state of balance. Let's put it that way. So what have you been doing with folks? What's your protocol now to once you've been seeing some things happening, but also knowing, you know, who's had the vaccine and who hasn't, what kind of things are you doing to kind of support them at this point? So one of my clients is a Navy SEAL, uh, active Navy SEAL. He was on one of the SEAL teams and he was forced to do the shot or they said they'd kick him off. So he, the second shot sent him into the ER five times. He almost died. And uh, he came in. Uh, I, I have ozone, foot bath, beam ray, 
And so I've been doing my stuff here and I've been referring them out for all the nutritional supplements to Dr. Todd Watts, to uh, some local guys here. Uh, so any binders, you know, Cellcore makes great binders. Uh, there's, there's some uh, docs that have specific protocols for flushing, but anytime you can do the binders, the chelators, uh, with, with all the getting the minerals back in parasite cleanses, all that are going to be huge for you. Uh, the ozone is kind of his staple go-to because it keeps flushing, uh, any liver support, uh, 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 what are the two things, uh, NAC and alpha lipoic acid and load up on that just to support that liver. Uh, I love when people can do healing touch and have, have someone just hold the liver because the liver is what's really getting taxed. So when we can get that thing flush in, those are some of the things that we're doing. Nice. Nice. I mean, anything helps. And definitely this is kind of why I wanted to chat about it because I want folks to know that, you know, there's things you can do. You can help your body out here. You know, there's no shame that things happen. It's the way it is. We, you know, that's, that's what happened. So it, it happened. We're moving forward. Let's get everybody back into balance. So yeah. tell us a little bit about the EMF side of things here. And you've got the EMF rocks. Um, I still use them. I have some right here. In fact, right here, always next to all of my stuff. I've got my EMF <laughs> rocks bag right here. Cause this is my high area of, of EMF activity. There you go. Look, he's got his mega bag there. I've got the, the bigger one by my bed. So let's, let's talk about the EMF rocks. Let's talk about EMFs just in general and, and how, like, I want to do a good recap for folks as to what is happening with EMFs. So I'm going to let you take the floor as to EMFs and let's give folks a recap and what you've been seeing lately and the whole scale. Yeah. Dr. Janine, so they just keep rolling this stuff out and they keep getting uh, the devices to stay on all the time and they're keeping on aggregating all your information at record speeds. So we saw this uh, this emergency broadcast alert uh, a few weeks back. And yeah. A, lo yeah, a lot of people were saying that they felt that that was, there was a secondary bandwidth that they were going to broadcast to kind of activate more of the COVID you know, shots that people got or any heavy metals in their body. And so we're, we're seeing a lot of this EMFs and them being able to turn phones on, even if they're off, like people had their phone on mute and it was still broadcasting the alert. I had mine on airplane mode off and in, a, in our Faraday bags, but I mean, I wanted it to be completely away from that because I don't know what they're putting on the phones or or what have you. But it, the the frequency they broadcast at that time was 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 uh, not challenging for most people, so it wasn't a big stressor. Hmm. Uh, but but just to know that they could do that, our our cautions are, are still the same. Develop proximity protocols uh, with the technology understand that we're one with our environment. We're made on scalar waves that are unpolarized. All the man-mades are one directional waveforms or they don't work. And so it's a totally different waveform than our body is used to. So when we're having these things in close proximity, it's going to mess with our cognitive. It's going to chip away at our our bio field, our life force, which is our energy field that you know we talk about goes out about six feet. So if you have an environmental stressor that's chipping away at that, the chemistry in your body is going to ultimately change as well. So let's start to get into nature more and clear the stressors. But I, I think the net net of it is the biometrics mm -hmm. really slow down this data harvesting. The AI, wow, the stuff that it's doing, like good and bad, what I'm seeing, uh, Dr. Darren, or not Darren, he's not Dr. Darren Olian. The, he wrote the book, uh, Fatal Conveniences, and he's done uh, some TV shows with Zac Efron. Uh, 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 he is doing a, a new AI system for the good. Uh, and But the stuff that this, this can do, it can replicate exactly 
how someone would think or what they could create. And, and now they can track and trace with, they can literally use these biometrics to find you from your gait, how you walk. They don't even need your face, your eyes, your fingerprints, your palm print, your retina scan, your voice, like they can see it on your gait. So, and, and then they could see it in driving levels too, like how you drive, how fast you drive. They're, they're really diving into a lot of this stuff. So I'm going to lean into the stay away from the electric cars, slow down the data harvesting, get your phone in Faraday bags, try to get the Android phones, shut down all the tractors on the apps. I mean, those are some of the things that we're seeing from our last conversation. Whoa. Okay. So of course, you know, we had talked last time too about how to, you know, use a little bit of the tech for monitoring certain things in terms of your health, but how to like use it sparingly. And I'm, I'm serious. Like, yeah, I've noticed the AI on like my voice to talk has gotten a lot better and it's gotten a heck of a lot better on Instagram in the last like three months, I would say. So yes, AI is, AI is real guys. Um, but the other big thing is with like things like the whoop, things like the Apple watch, of course, um, give us the scoop on all that stuff, like the aura rings and all those. What have you seen? And I know there's certain things you probably can't say, but like, what have you seen in terms of, I guess what I'm going to straight up ask is what's the worst one? <laughs> or what is the time frame now that we should be watching? Because I know when we had talked before, it was like, take that stuff off. And honestly, since we talked last, I didn't even put my aura ring back on because I didn't want to. And I was I afraid. I was afraid. And I was like, you know what? I, I, mm. But I do use a Morpheus watch for my HRV, but I put it on. It's two minutes and then I have it through my workout and then I'm done. Nothing else. Good. And that's what we wanted is to use the technology to our advantage, not let it use us. So, you know, you can do this stuff. And, and then once you have that baseline, you know where you're at and then you could maybe not use it for a month and then see where you are again. Like that's, that's how we really want to understand all this stuff. So uh, there's no lesser evil on this stuff. It's all one directional and low level to high level. We know it messes with your voltage gated calcium channels, which is the gateway for your mitochondria for energy. So it affects us at the cellular level, oxidative stress, destructures water at that 2.45 gigahertz, which is 2.45 billion waves per second. And that's what all the bandwidth of these uh, are at, essentially. So there is no good in, in, in the wearable technologies other than using it for baseline or endpoint testing. Uh, there is a lot of great technology out there for electricity and rife machines and sound beds and PEMF devices that that or you plug your ozone into something to generate heat and ozone like there's some great stuff with technology but we want to understand that most of this the wireless stuff is not so great too but one of our clients had diabetes and so they were going to go to to Fiji and the mom was wearing the tracker with the with her son for the first time ever getting on an airplane and a long flight from you know, Southern California to, to Fiji. So when everyone turned on their Wi-Fi, the kid's glucose spikes 200 points and gets a bloody nose. And then towards the tail end of the flight, he was still sleeping, uh, but half the people woke up and bloody nose when they started using their Wi-Fi again. And he was still sleeping, got the bloody nose. And she's literally awake and watching this whole thing down and metering it. So I'm like, how is he getting bloody nose? He didn't eat. He's sleeping. Oh, it was the environmental stressors that are changing the chemistry in the body. Okay. Now I understand that this is the second time it happened, you know, and, and so we, we really want to understand that our environment could allow us to thrive or it could kill us. Like literally what is our environment? And people don't think about it unless it's air and you're in LA and you could see the pollution like, oh, it's dirty air. No, no, no. Our invisible environment are these waves and particles that are traveling through the air, which is ether plasma, which now it's inundated with non-native waveforms. And you can hear it. So when I go and dive in our cove, I can hear the dolphins or the whales in the cove. And then when there's an electric foil, foil board, 
Dr. Janine, it, it sounds like a radio station on static turned all the way up underneath the water. That's what our bodies hear. That's what the plants nervous systems hear. That's what pets can hear. Most humans can't hear that bandwidth, but you can definitely hear that static nature in the water so much clearer. It's wild. Okay. So foil board, like the, the boards that people are using to like levitate basically. Yeah. I don't know how to describe it better. That's what it looks like to me. Um, my husband thinks they're awesome. Me, like, oh, thank you. Um, but okay. So those foil boards. So even the, the electric ones, yeah, the electric ones, like, and, and what about the ones that are like, like the fast ones, right? The hyd hydrofoil where they're zooming around. Yeah, they just go on their own. Like the, you can have a foil board where you can create the momentum on your own through a swell. And then there's electric one that's propelled. So it's electric ones. Any of the electric device, you can hear it in the water. Because I'm spending so much time in the ocean, free diving and swimming and surfing. And, and I, 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 you start to become one with the ocean. Like that's becomes my new home. And I can hear things that, that you don't normally hear. What else? What else pops off that kind of static? What else can you hear that'll send things off? Oh well, you can hear when boats are in the in the area, things of that nature, just the the motors of it. But it's a different. It's a really different sound than the electricity per se. It's wild. Interesting. So you know, of course, the impact on the animals. You know, the impact on us. We're all energetic beings. And so I want to be thinking about like, okay, let's give folks some really solid information on how to lower this. Kind of like you were saying, like, you know, get off the tech stuff, you know, check it once a month and call it good. What about like distance? Cause you were talking about six feet of distance. Like how much distance does it take before something kind of fries your, your vibe as I would call it, or your energetics? Because I feel like so many people were, were, we're trying really hard to keep our positive emotions. We're trying really hard to keep in the right zone, feeling right, good. And then it seems like weird things like come out of nowhere and blast you. So if I didn't have a phone on me and I was out walking and I passed someone that had a phone on them, how how much distance from them would I need to get before I started to be fried by their phone? Well, that's a tricky question because every inch the uh, phone's away from your body, it, it's lowering the signal strength. So I just feel it's more of the satellites and the whole internet of things where all the different devices are always on and always connected. So then if it's yours is on, it's going to come to you and it's going through us. So okay. Okay. we're how much extra radiation are people absorbing? I think it's up to each individual alone and depending on how strong their life force is, uh, how, how much heavy metals they have, excuse me, in their body and, and, and how toxic they are with EMF already will depend on how much more voltage they're carrying. We're carrying up, you know, like several more volts than we normally would carry mm -hmm. uh, in, in this day and age. So there's an absorption rating, the further away from everybody, the better. I mean, I'm going to go to a charger game this week and there's going to be, you know, however many 50 plus thousand people, all EMF, all 5G stadium. I'm just going to have my shield up of a mini grounding bag on me. And I'm just going to enjoy myself. Like I, I, you got, there comes a point where you can fend this stuff off and then I'm going to do my grounding. I'll be in the ocean for about an hour before and then I'll walk barefoot after when I get home, like just to ground out a little bit. So make sure you just go through your protocols and not worry so much about, you know, the stressors of it. Know that we can convert a one directional waveform. There's this thing called physics. It's great. If it's one directional, we can change it just intently with our energy field and our chi. We can also utilize the earth's resonance Mm -hmm. which is natural to do it. And I love this so much more than manufacturing a resonance. The other thing I've seen so many new pendants come out and they're manufacturing a resonance and embedding into a metal or a pendant. And I pose the question like, Hey, do you guys like eating GMO food? You know, like no one does. So why would we want a genetically modified resonance in our environment? 
No one does it better than, than nature. So that's why our grounding bags are really the answer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. Makes sense. And yeah, thanks for kind of giving your protocol kind of thing. And I think a lot of people are like, okay, how do you put a shield up? How do we energetically balance ourselves? Like, I like the idea of going into the ocean, walking, you know, outside barefoot. What if folks are like, Justin, I live in Alaska on an island (laughs) and it's rainy all the time. And I, I don't really want mud between my toes and I don't want to get in the water. So what, what do we, what do we say to folks? Like what's, what's a basic protocol if, if like anyone, wherever they live, if they live in Antarctica or wherever there's snow, wherever, whatever even happens in Antarctica, I don't know. Yeah. That's a whole one of my topic. favorite. Yeah. One of my favorite protocols, Dr. Janine is comes from Dr. Darren Weissman and he does the lifeline technique where he does infinite love and gratitude. So with one hand point to the earth and with the other hand, give your body so have the when you're pointing to the earth, you're you're literally grounding. So your intent is to root and connect to the resonance of the earth. So you ground yourself and then give your body infinite love and gratitude. Give your mind infinite love and gratitude. And all fingers together, give your spirit infinite love and gratitude. Okay. And when you can do all of those, mind, body, spirit. And just give infinite love and gratitude with the intent of grounding and connecting the resonance of the earth. You're already there. Okay. I mean, and then you're building your life force up. And and remember the saying I always do when someone's grounding or recharging their body by tapping on the bag. I said, hey, you're a strong tree and you have deep roots into the ground. So visualize this stuff, really connect to these visuals and these feels of rooting into the ground. And the more the wind blows, the the stronger you get and the more you ebb and flow. So little things like that, their cues, their techniques, their visualizations, it's intent. That's how we can really start to build our life force up and connect to the earth, no matter if we're in Alaska or a high rise. Makes sense. Makes sense. Now you've talked about heavy metal buildup in the system. Um, conventional wise, you know, folks are looking at regular docs. We can only, if we go through lab core class, we can get three heavy metals, four if we're lucky in terms of being able to test lead, cadmium, um, lead, cadmium, mercury. And I can't think of the last one, but that's like the fourth one that we can, there's four of them. And Obviously, in terms of chemtrails and things of that nature, I've heard a lot about aluminum. I've heard a lot about musings of things of that nature. What do you recommend to folks for testing? What's what's your go-to testing? I'm curious. For heavy metals? Mm -hmm. Oh, I go to people like you. (laughs) (laughs) All right. And and then whatever they recommend. So hair samples are great, I I think, uh, for testing that and seeing where you're at. With the heavy metals so you can do like a uh, saliva test for uh for the adrenals the cortisol levels do blood work for a lot of stuff too so uh, but i like to go to more natural doctors uh, that like yourself that that do that type of work and that could really lean in on some really looking at these great markers but not at the end of the day you got to start to use the binders and the chelators and the chlorellas and the spirulinas and cell core makes a really great, they make a bunch of great binders for heavy metals for that. Uh, we're rolling out a new toothpaste within the next month uh, from pink montmorillonite. It's, it's from one of our mines and it has montmorillonites, a, a pure form of bentonite clay, mm, interesting. which is amazing. So it's going to have Three ingredients, water, distilled water, pure, 85% pure montmorillonite, and then essential oil, uh, organic. And so for spearmint will be the flavor for it. Because uh, from Dr. Jerry Cortola's, we use his revitin as well. So those are the two toothpaste. We'll use ours and his, which I love his. But uh, he said that the peppermint kills the enamel off your teeth. It kind of wipes it. So if people get really sensitive in the upper areas of their teeth, a lot of times it's just from the flavor of the toothpaste. So uh, the spearmint citrus uh, really helps save the enamel a lot more. So we're going to roll ours out with a a spearmint, 
But the cool thing with this is it's so mineral dense, you're going to help rebuild the enamel. And then if you swallow some, it's just a binder. Yeah. Like, it's just literally clay. I mean, that's it's it, but it's a pure form of Ben clay that we swallow all the time for, for chelating. So I'm really excited about the new toothpaste. Cool. Cool. Yeah. I like that. I like that. I'm, you know, simple, simple is good. Yeah, I'll send you some. Awesome. Well, we'll definitely make sure we we do a good review on here for that one. Um, I guess my biggest question then, you know, for folks too now at this point, they're like, okay, all right, we know the heavy metals are in our system. We know we need to chelate a little bit. We know we need to get on balancing our ions. We know we know how to do that. We know how to get um all that done. Then they might be thinking, like, okay, if I bought a a necklace or a pendant that's supposed to offset my my EMFs or or let's say, interrupt that one directional wave. Well, can we use it with EMF rocks? Can And how do we, you know, how do we put it, the EMF rocks, like the little bag I have here, how do we put that on ourselves? You know, you had said taking it out of the bag to travel, but but what about just on an everyday basis? I think folks might be interested in, in that kind of thing. Do you put it in your pocket? What do we do? Yeah. So this just came out of my pocket. You had one right there. The full sizes for your bed, desk, or car seat, you need five together to clear a house, seven with solar, seven if you drive an electric car. Uh, but the minis are for the on-the-go protection. So this one is like where you mentioned, like if people are wondering about extraneous signals when they're just running around town, this is great for a pocket purse or backpack for one person individually. That's what we want to have. So I put it in my pocket and I put my phone on the outside of it. It's a buffer between you know, the, my body, uh, and the phone, the device. Uh, so unfortunately we can't make jewelry out of it. Uh, but so that's how we're deploying it. But if someone does have some EMF jewelry, it's only going to help, uh, that device, uh, and create more of a coherence because it's just nature's resonance. So it's going to create a coherence between any non-native waveform, whether you, that one's attempting to do good or or not you know per se so or it'll clean up you know if we loaded up signal or grounding bags into a a, a, a call that was staticky it's going to create more of a coherence for that one directional waveform as well so the static will end up going away and we've had clients that had had disruption in phone service from having a new tower outside of their office and we put groundings bags in there and then it clears up the signal. So that's how we know that that works. So, hmm. uh, interesting. Yeah. Super fascinating. Hmm. Hmm. I've noticed a lot more interruptions in service in, in the last, you know, couple, couple months. And, and when you mentioned that, that emergency broadcasting thing, I was actually on a call with a client um, oh, no. and I wasn't on the phone. I was on the zoom, but it was right. The phone was there. Right. And now I'm thinking about it and I'm like, man, okay. That amplified some stuff there. And honestly, like since I was kind of thinking back since that call, like what have I seen happen with folks? I've had a couple of people who really have not felt well. So it's interesting that you mentioned that. Like, I didn't even think, I didn't even think of that emergency broadcasting thing as being, anything right it's like oh okay but the thing is is when's the last time we had something like that yeah they th that's so rare so they set it out and then there was a secondary frequency and now i mean these hawaii fires like there there are systems that are in play where they can have new radar systems and they're they're like new harp systems if you will where they're really can start to target areas and set fires and specifically target certain areas through radar and like a phased array. So it's, it's, uh, it's a different day and age. We just want people to be aware of some of this stuff yeah. and start to, the more you can opt out of smart meters and get your devices on airplane mode, the more you're not in that interplay, that internet of things. And, and if it stuff goes around you, you're less of a fire hazard. You're less of a stressor on your body. And then we got to build our life force up and get grounded by nature. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I I don't want folks to hear all this and be like, oh my God, we're screwed. It's like, we, 
we have, I truly believe we are energetic, powerful beings and we have the power to fight this. We do. Yeah. I think we do. Um, and the part with the AI, I want to cross back to that for a section right now because you had mentioned like shutting off the tracking parts on those and you had talked about how it can it can track like your gait and things of that nature. What can folks do right now if they're like, I have no idea how much AI is is tracking me or doing those kind of things. It sounded like get rid of your Apple phone. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Just go in. So my phone's here. It's my phone right here. I'm going to go into the settings. And then you scroll through all the different settings. The, it'll have endless amounts of things you can click on. Click on any one of them. Apple Store, Audio, Audiobooks, Best Buy, you know, just any of them, Dropbox, like the the Duo Mobo, like whatever app you've downloaded on there and including Instagram or whatever, but you can, you can go on to any one of these apps and then there's going to be cellular data, Surrey search, camera. They're all going to be on. So you got to turn those all off. And, and then there, there might be 10 other things if you click on one of them that are on and they're always, so go through each app individually, click on everything and then turn it off, turn it off, turn it off, turn it off. Cause the location finders, all that stuff, they're making these cars now. So the, the, the electric cars that you, they can turn off the car, like literally already they're doing that already. If you don't pay your bill, they're turning it off. They can set the number of miles on the electric cars. They want us to use more of the electrical grid uh, that they're telling us to reduce the use, usage of. So it's literally insane. Like, hey, let's not have incandescent light bulbs that are better for our body and our light because they use too much electricity. But let's plug our car in and, and let's start using massive batteries to drive around the city and then have to recharge and plug our car in to a giant massive battery that causes 18% lower testosterone. This is just, it's, it's just absurd the direction we're headed. So if people could start to understand this stuff yeah. uh, from a really aware approach, we can say no to stopping to buying these cars they are trying to do it through incentives. Like in California, we just shopped for a new car. You can get a $50,000 car for 30,000. That's a huge difference in a quality of a car, but mm -hmm. you can only get it if it's electric. <laughs> so yeah. stop buying the electric car for 30,000, like pay a little more per month and get a, a gas fuel car. Because the electric deal is just not sustainable. It's not great for our health. And what it's leading to on the EMF space, on the control space, is a really scary grid. Abs I mean, absolutely. Absolutely. The fact that, you know, electric, well, not only that, here's the, here's where I started to be a little worried. When you could control your refrigerator and have TV through your refrigerator, and then when your stove, you could like put it on an app and turn it on before you got home. I started to be like, you know, and this was before the electrical stuff was being pushed, but now we're we're pushing electrical stoves and saying that gas is bad. Poisonous? Good God. This is no, killing me. I mean, respectfully, yeah. hey, I'm a capitalist and I'm I'm very conservative in a lot of my views. And I, I want everyone to be the best person. I love freedom. But there are manufacturing opportunities where a lot of the extraction of the stuff can be a lot better. So mm -hmm. shame on big corporations for just polluting to get that stuff. Like they can do it a lot better. So I, I, I don't want to, you know, make everyone think that like we're just against the environment because we're not, we're totally for it. And we don't agree. I, I at least me personally don't agree with a lot of the laws that they've lobbied to get out of like they can pollute at levels that no one's allowed to pollute like these huge companies just to extract this stuff so if if corporations wouldn't do things at all costs uh of of health for our environment and just pull the good out that we could use 
there wouldn't be so much pushback, I feel. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, I think the biggest thing is, is that we're being greenwashed as to what's yeah. good for the the environment and what isn't. And, you know, yeah, like electrical cars do make sense in terms of less carbon um, footprint and things of that nature. But like the bottom line is, is like you said, the batteries and yeah. like, wh- where are you going to put the batteries in the, in the trash? And, you know, people don't think about that. And this is something yeah. that, yeah, I do this podcast so that we've gotten some awareness here, but I just... Yeah, it's it's getting ridiculous. And I want folks to really understand the impact on their bodies. Well, this is happening for sure. And I mean, we've been lied to in every major industry from, you know, auto industry, even on the fuel, like higher octane is better for your engine. No, it's not. Lower octane is. I I mean, now electric cars are better for us. No, they're not. It's it's going to disrupt your hormones. And then pharma. Oh, shots and drugs are health. Well, no, they're not health. Like it'll. All the other pillars of health, they're loving, touching, grounding, exercising, breathing, sweating, smiling, being together, that's health. And then you go into the agriculture, like, hey, agriculture, like, let's let's use chemicals to modify things to grow more food. Well, that's not true either. And then, then even in the dental world, like the dental world is probably the biggest lie. Like, let's put you know, mercury fillings and nickel in your mouth and, and, and think that that's okay. Nickel causes cancer. Mercury is like probably one of the most toxic sus- substances that you have to, you know, discharge properly, but yet they're putting in, in people's mouths. Like they're, so this, this whole world that we live in, we we really want to unlearn because Unfortunately, every major industry has lied for their profit and it's not okay. And so now it's time to really unlearn and get back to what the true pillars of health are and lean in on that and then throw your purchase power into that. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, that's, that's where we have our voice guys. That is where we have our voice. It's literally in what you spend your money on just like Justin said, because if we're spending our money on things like the darn, you know, electrical cars, well, what do you think? Supply demand, we're going to get more electrical cars. And if you spend your money on more gas cars, guess what? These guys want money. And so what are they going to do? They're going to go, oh, well, we lied about the electrical thing. It really isn't better. Yeah. Cause they want your money. So yeah, follow the money. Follow the money. Oh, my goodness. Well, Justin, we have we have blasted through all kinds of fun stuff for folks on on this episode. But I definitely want folks to know where they can find you. Um, also, let's talk emfrocks.com. Um, let's talk. We didn't even get into your your MCT oil and how that helps with things, too. So maybe a quick blurb on that and then folks can find where, where they can go for that, too. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, emfrocks.com, athleticism.com are the two spots to find me. We really rolled out a new MCT oil just because of diabetes, the glucose spiking with the waveforms. And in the in the book, The Invisible Rainbow, they didn't have any diabetes 130 years ago. There are six cases he found in the entire world of it. That's crazy. And now, yeah, there's a lot of fake food and all and sugar, but there's way more EMFs as well. So to me, to see glucose spiking just with one of our clients in an airplane at that level, I feel it's more of an electrical challenge. And so to have these buffers of the proper oils in your body uh, are, are going to be so, so helpful. And sometimes people just need a bump with the medium chain. They need more of that so their fuel, their bodies can absorb it. Uh, and, and that'll be a great buffer for them. So we have huge docs like yourself and then Dr. Charlie Fagenholtz that are really promoting our oil uh, in a big way. And he's, he's a big muscle tester that's saying, Hey, people really are using these oils and yeah, you want the grass fed butter, ghee, and then the olive oil, but we got to get these good fats into our system. Uh, and, and then the MCT oil is just another one of those. Gotcha. Gosh, I think for folks, it's really important to understand that like the seed oil is not so great. The fats are important though, because our cells are made of fats. That's, that's what our, you know, we, we don't have cell walls like plants, but we have cell layers and those are all need phospholipids, which are fats. And if we don't have them now, we've lost some protection and a buffer. And 
Would you say that MCTOs are kind of like a soup too for help to keep the ions kind of floating around in there too? To, yeah, to I, I, I feel it is. And and even though it is a seed, you know, it's a, it's a coconut or a palm kernel, you know, and I think our extraction process isn't as bad as the other ones that get that bad rating as well. And then you're not flashpoint, you're not cooking it. So there's that too, but we don't have the solvents that they're using in all these other extraction processes. And that's the difference. You could see it, you could taste it in our oil. And so when you're adding just a teaspoon in the morning, teaspoon and I, a little goes a long way. You're going to see your metabolism, everything start to really come alive because it, it's finally, it's like a fire burning a fire with a log. You have sustained fuel versus the spike in a crash in a sugar which would be burning that fire with paper. Makes sense. Makes sense. You know, the blood sugar thing's really interesting that you mentioned, and I haven't seen anyone with the the nosebleeds, but what I have seen is like a lot of folks that we can't seem to get their blood sugar under a certain range mm-hmm. and certain spikes at certain times. And now I'm like, hmm, I'm going to have them look back at like, what wearables do you have on? And have you taken a break from them? <laughs> and can we get you in nature for a week without anything? Because- Crazy enough. And I think this happened last time you were on, you and I did an interview. My computer had full charge at the beginning of this podcast and it literally zapped down to nothing. So I think our energy, like that something went down, like in the course of this podcast, I had to literally step over and charge the computer back up. And like, no joke, I had a full charge at the beginning of this podcast. And I swear to God, last time we talked, this happened too. Like, I think I have a memory of this. So I'm like, it was so funny. Something energetically is going on. I'm going with it. But, but you know, I'm just glad for everybody out there who's awake and who is willing to share information with folks to really help us to live better lives and understand what's out there. That's We, we got to share this info. So guys, check out Justin's website. You can check the emfrocks.com out and then also athleticism.com as well. Great book he has too, by the way, that I think we had talked about in one of our previous podcasts. And so folks, I'll have the links to all of our previous podcasts at drjkrausnd.com. Justin, once again, thank you for coming on. I know that you and I could probably talk for hours and we might just have to have you back on again here in a little bit and dish on the latest. I appreciate it. That was a fun one. Oh, absolutely. Hey, fellow health junkie. Thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.